Hello, Motor Rider World fans, and welcome to this paddock talk, talking about Lamar Race Day Sunday, of course, MotoGP out in France. And let's start with Brad Binder. Got my supporters cap on because it was another heroic effort from Brad Binder. We, we all know the troubles that are at KTM at the moment. Brad is just, you know, icing those problems over in many ways. But putting in the hard work, putting in the dedication, I've seen it with my own eyes, um, you know, being at the races. I see a lot of people commenting on, on social medias and that about Brad and KTM and this and that. It's it's easy to do that. You know, I, I'm one of those people. You know, when we when you're so invested uh, as a fan into it, it's you do. You get frustrated. Trust me, I get frustrated. But being at the track, seeing the behind the scenes stuff, you 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 understand things a bit more. You learn things a bit more. You see and hear things. And I can tell you now that it doesn't paint the full picture. Brad himself is putting in so much work when it comes to physical, mental, psychological setup of the bike, spending time on the bike. The guy spends every second in that paddock with his team trying to fix the problem. The team are working effortlessly to try and solve the problems. It's, an, it's a never-ending surge to try and fix the problem. I can tell you that now, but it is very frustrating when you see you know, in the qualifying, when Brad qualifies 18th, and when we know that Brad is a top three MotoGP rider, a top five at worst, and, and you see that happening, and the handbrake at the moment very much is the KTM, and I think KTM know that themselves, and they are working so hard to, to fix the problems, you know, out of the four KTMs at Le Mans, one finished, and that was, that was Brad Binder with one wing. What, a, as I said, I use the words heroic, and I think that is the best way to describe it, because Brad's biggest quality other than his pure natural ability to ride a motorcycle we know that is his mental strength and like I said I've been with him at the track where there's had bad sessions and you know you're kind of expecting this rider to come in throw his gloves throw his helmet kick doors in you know and, and rightfully so because this is you know what three years in now and it's still this this recurring problem and you don't get that from Brad you know you get this deep breath understands the problem and you know knows there is a problem, but wants to fix it, makes a plan, puts the plan in motion as, as best as he possibly can. And he just is so mentally strong. I think that is Brad's biggest asset, apart from his the, 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 the riding skill. It's just this mental strength to just never give up, to dig deep and to find the positives and the best out of everything, out of every bad situation, out of every negative, he can turn it into a positive. And I can tell you now, Brad pays attention to to all the, you know, goings on on Facebook in the media and everything. And he and he and he takes it personally when he and when he reads those attacks of of fans saying, you know, oh this and that and move on and KTM. And he, he does. He takes it in, but he's somehow able just to still come out on a Sunday, dig deep not let anything deter him from the his, his his plan and his goal, which is to do his absolute best and to try and just finish as high up as possible. And he did it again at Lamar, started 18th, got a good start, was right in the mix, had that early tangle with Zarco, lost uh, the left-hand side of the wing. Yeah, the left-hand side of the wing. And then we saw with Remy Gardner earlier in the year when he's lost his wing and he said, you know, it put ruin to my race. You can't ride this KTM without wings. Well, Brad finished 8th, 8th from 18th at the Lamar GP with one wing. And um, I must say thank you to Courtney, of course, Brad's uh, beautiful other half, who kind of kept me up to date with things, what's happening. And she said Brad was absolutely exhausted after the race. He felt like vomiting. That's how much effort the man put into that result. And then she said the best way he described the feeling of riding the bike with one wing was like when you go to the pick and pay, and this just happens to me all the time. I'm sure it happens to everyone. You go and you spend five minutes trying to pick out the best trolley because they are, they're few and far between. So you pick a trolley and as you walk in, you want to turn right down the vegetable or fruit aisle and that trolley just wants to go left. You know, with that one wobbly, buckly, kind of twitchy wheel that just does this and wants to go the white, go its own way. And that was a really good way of describing it without the wings. So yeah, Brad really did have to dig deep and fight. And again, just got the best out of a tough situation throughout the whole weekend. You know, there were glimpses on Friday that problems had been solved and it just didn't carry through. 
But to come out and finish eighth from 18th on the grid at a Lamar Grand Prix where we saw a lot of crashes, a lot of people struggling, you know, Brad and the K teams were the, the only guys running the hard front tire because that's the only tire they could get to work. That's already at a disadvantage compared to medium and soft fronts. Miller finished on the podium with a soft front tire. The medium seemed to be the choice with Bastianini winning. But you're already on the back foot there. You know, you're lining up on that grid knowing you're at a disadvantage straight away. And you know, to put in that performance, tip of the hat to you, Brad Binder, once again. Absolutely sublime performance by Brad Binder. And let's just hope that KTM can... You know, just keep working. Brad and KTM will never, ever stop working. I could tell you that much. I look at Alation Aprilia. That's been a, a seven-year project. And now, you know, look at look at what's happening there. They are championship contenders. So, yeah, before I head to Darren, Alasia Spargo, brilliant once again. He's been brilliant the whole weekend. This was a track he was supposed to suffer at. Not one of his best, not one of his favorites, not one of Aprilia's favorites. And there he was on the podium again, second in the World Championship, a couple of points beyond Fabio right in the mix bastianini again I, I said on the friday already when bastianini has a good friday you know he's going to have a good sunday yeah he had a couple of crashes on friday and saturday but when bastianini comes out of the blocks fast which he did you know he's going to have a good sunday and he went out and he won the race and it was a phenomenal race again the guy is like a a, 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 tech, a master tactician he just plans his races to perfection and he put pressure and, and put a huge mistake on Mr. Cooler's eyes, Peko Banyaya, who, you know, when he's out front in those situations, just gets head down, bum up and clears off. This time, Bastianini put him under pressure and he folded under that pressure, you know. And I was speaking yesterday about, you know, Peko, when you talk about him as a championship contender, he's definitely one of the fastest, if not the fastest guy on the grid with that Ducati. But he just has this chink in his armor. And today that chink came out, chink came out again with that crash. You know, he made a mistake. Bastianini put the pressure on, ran wide, tried to fight back and tucked the front and crashed out. And that's that's my question mark with Peko and the overall championship. But uh, take nothing away from Bastianini. Superb race again. He is now surely up for grabs for that second um, uh, factory Ducati ride occupied by Jack Miller, who put in another phenomenal ride with that soft front tyre. And Jack's just a proper showman, you know. Doesn't always get the results on track, but certainly off track is one of the favourite guys. Throwing his gloves in, the knee slide is that proper, you know, old school riding style doing the, the circles there. He's just a showman and he sells himself. That's why he belongs in the MotoGP paddock. And I think Ducati must be looking at that, you know. He gets the job done, not all the time, but he plays quietly in the background as a good teammate. He's a, a good team member. He plays the team role to perfection and he has, you know, the odd really good races. Do they want to... You know, I think Neil Hodgson said it. Do you want to upset the apple cart and go with another rider like a Martin who could, you know, I, I see him as kind of a kid that could throw his toys out the cart. In a way, certainly four DNFs in a row. He's not doing himself any favors there. So, yeah, let's see how that all plays out. I've got some scoop and poop, uh, another episode of that coming out soon where we delve into that a little bit more. But for now, Jack Miller, another phenomenal ride. Peko buckling under the pressure. And Neo Bastianini right in the mix for the championship. Alasia Spargro. I mean, who would have called this at the beginning of the year? I didn't see this coming, but certainly makes for exciting stuff. Moving on to Darren Binder and another learning experience for him. Said he got a good start, made up a good couple of positions, um, made a mistake into one of the corners, ran off, came back on track and just couldn't get into a rhythm. So it was a really tough track. It's the, the tightest, narrowest track uh, on, on, on the calendar. But Darren came out of it. P17, third rookie, kept the bike upright, finished the race, you know, and... Yeah, other than a couple more positions up, but, you know, box ticked, more experience gained at a really tough track, you know, crashed, I think, once the whole weekend, you know, learning, 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 gaining experience. So just keep that hard work going, Darren, just keep believing and those results will come. You know, another Mandalika race, I don't think is too far away. Uh, and then, yeah, a couple of other notes, Honda and Mark Marquez, you know, Mark got the best out of a bad situation, just doesn't look comfortable at all on that bike. You know, we, we talk about KTM's woes. Honda's woes are, are just as bad. Mark Marquez is just not enjoying life. It just seems like KTM and the Hondas, these rigid, unforgiving chassis, you know, very much balanced on the front end with this Michelin front tire that just cannot handle the pressure, it seems like. Um, and Mark Marquez is, yeah, he's just, yeah, he's a passenger at the moment. Mark, it's, it's sad to see an eight-time world champion like Mark Marquez riding around for sixth or seventh or whatever it is and just not looking happy. So I really hope they can get that sorted soon because... I want to see a fit, fast, you know, happy Mark Marquez again. He just adds so much value to, to MotoGP. So I'm hoping that'll that'll come soon. But yeah, as for the rest of the Hondas as well, also just nowhere. So Honda and KTM certainly on the back foot. 
at the moment. Then speaking about the bat foot, bat, back foot, Suzuki, you know, announced that they're leaving MotoGP. Rins showed amazing pace throughout the whole weekend. Mir wasn't quite there, but he had, had a really good race going on. But then, you know, with Rins, again, the wheels just fall off the bus, as it's done so many times in a good position. And down he goes. Ron Mir, you know, uncharacteristic mistake. He's Mr. Consistent. And this time, you know, pushing and, and down he goes. And I think, I think, we might be seeing a different Rins for the rest of the year. I think we're going to see a Rins that takes a little bit more chances because he knows, I think he's got that Repsol Honda contract already signed up. He knows his future's not with Suzuki. So now why not just go push that a little bit more and try and win more races in that? And and like Hodgson and them said, you know, it's championship pretty much done and dusted for Jean Mir because you know, and Rins, you know, you know they're not going to go on these five or four race winning streaks. They just don't win that many races. I saw a stat, you know, Suzuki, since they came back into MotoGP all those years ago, they've won like five of races and I was like I'm sure Suzuki have won more than that and it's, it's true Maverick Vinales Rins has won three and, and Alex Rins and Jean Mir has won one so they're just a manufacturer you know that's consistently good but not exceptional or excellent you know so yeah it was a bad day unfortunately for Suzuki um, we're gonna have to see how they continue for the rest of the year I'm sure the team must be feeling demotivated with all the news and everything that's going on there so Livio Supo's got a job on there to keep his riders and his team members motivated uh, for the rest of the, what's going to be a challenging year, especially heading into Mugello next uh, and a couple of really tough races. So we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. Fabio Quattararo, Mr. Consistent once again. It wasn't that that same Quattararo that, you know, was right up there in the mix. He, he was just there or thereabouts, and that was pretty much his whole weekend. Just doesn't have the bike underneath him to really compete against the Ducatis and that at a track like this in scenarios like this and got the best out of a bad situation again. You know, the guys leading the championship, Picked up another good result right in the mix inside the top five. So that's that's how you win championships. And it looks like Fabio's, again, just getting the best out of that bad Yamaha situation. Morbidelli, third last. Dobby, second last. Okay, Darren Binder, we know, was last. But you don't look at him. You've got Franco Morbidelli, second in the World Championship a couple of years ago. Dobby, multiple times second in the World Championship. Won 100 million MotoGP races before. And they're just not getting it right. They really are not getting it right. So, again, tip of the hat to Fabio for getting it right on that machine. While, you know, I read Dovi's comments after the race and he's like, the bike, I can't ride the bike. It's not suited to my riding style. I'm disappointed. He just sounds like a man that's given up a long time ago. Frankie Morbidelli, I don't know. I've said it time and time again. He's like the lost man in MotoGP at the moment. So a lot still to play for, a lot of uh, interesting things happening in the paddock. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel or the Motor Rider World YouTube channel for another Poop and Scoop or more Poop and Scoop episodes coming soon. And then remember to stay tuned to the Motor Rider World Facebook page for Talking MotoGP live uh, the Monday after every MotoGP race from 8 o'clock South African time, uh, 8 o'clock at night South African time. So until then... Uh, yeah, it was a great weekend in Lamar and look forward to the next rounds, Magello and Catalunya. Hopefully I can make it out there, but if not, stay tuned for some more videos.